We lost Marty Croft last night. According to CNN, surrounded by family and friends, Marty left this world due to kidney failure. He was 86 years old. This one hits hard, folks. Marty, along with his brother Sid, created many of my favorite Saturday morning television programs when I was growing up. H.R. Puffin Stuff put the duo, who started out as puppeteers, on the map. And while Jack Wilde as young Jimmy was great, it was Billy Hayes as Witchy Poo who really kept me up at night. You see, the genius of Sid and Marty's work was that their imagination knew no boundaries, and sometimes that meant dabbling a bit on the darker side of every child's imagination. The Brothers Grimm knew that, and so did the Brothers Croft. Now I watched the Bugaloos for completely different reasons. The music on the show and the lovely Caroline Ellis. Next we come to their masterpiece. The nuttiest and scariest show of the bunch. I am of course talking about Lidsville. I think this lunchbox explains it all. Evil magician, kind genie, and a boy trapped in a land where hats are alive. Marty's brother Sid came up with the idea for this one, but it was Marty who made the thing work. I love this show with all my heart. After that, I think it was Sigmund and the Sea Monsters. Such a fun show. And the irony of the fact that the show with the word monster in it was one of their least scary programs has not escaped me. Another personal favorite of mine was Land of the Lost. Unlike most Croft shows, this one was so popular, so beloved, that it ran with new episodes for three seasons on NBC. By the late 70s, Marty, along with his brother, ruled an entertainment empire, churning out hit after hit. There was Far Out Space Nuts, The Lost Saucer, Electra Woman and Dinah Girl, Dr. Shrinker, Bigfoot and Wild Boy. The list just goes on and on. Many of these shows would become part of a huge block of programs on ABC called The Croft Super Show, which was hosted by Captain Cool and the Kongs. Rumor has it that much of their music was actually written and performed by the Osmonds. But I'm getting a bit off track. Let's talk more about Marty. Last year I was able to attend CroftCon, and thanks to my friend Pat McCormick, I finally got my chance to meet Marty and thank him for all the wonderful childhood memories that he and his brother gave me growing up. It was such a special moment. That said, there was another moment that was even more special for me. You see, I also got a chance to visit with his daughter and a grandson for a few moments as we walked over to the event. They're the ones pictured in the black Croft t-shirts there. What was so wonderful, so enlightening, was how proud she was of her father and how much she wanted her own son to understand his legacy. It was a light bulb moment for me because I realized then and there that the CroftCon event wasn't just a celebration for the fans, but also for the Croft family as well. Rest in peace, Marty Croft. Even though I told you this last year, let me say it again. Thank you for encouraging me and kids everywhere to let our imaginations run wild, to face our fears, and most importantly, never back away from fun.